All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at the gold section of your rainbow review. And so it says, classify the following data based on the histogram. And so if we have that histogram, we can see that this histogram has a tail, and the tail is going to the left. And so since it has a tail going to the left, we would say that it is skewed left. Remember, don't be... Um, don't make the mistake of thinking that, oh, all the data is clustered or it's moved over to the right, so that means it's skewed right. That would be wrong. We always look at a tail, and so that would be kind of a longer part where the graph is kind of pulled away. And so whatever direction that tail is pointing, that's the direction it's skewed. Now, if it's got a tail going in both directions, that's even. That's the, kind of the same thing on both sides. Well, then we would say it's symmetrical. So that is not the case here, so this would be skewed left. So if it is symmetrical data, the best measure of center and spread would be the mean and the standard deviation. So remember that from your notes. Now here we're actually going to find the mean, the standard deviation, and the five number summary of the data set below. Round your answer to the nearest tenth if necessary. So for that we're going to use our calculators. All right, so to save us some time, what I did is I already added these numbers into our list. Just a side note, most times, since this is basically just using your calculator, most mistakes are made by inputting the numbers. So just because you typed them in doesn't mean you typed them in correctly. So even after I typed these numbers in, I double checked uh, and went through every single one of these numbers and made sure that there wasn't any mistakes. So I strongly recommend doing that yourself on the test because, again, if you typed in uh, 24 and you forgot, or when you typed it in, you didn't type in the 4 or it didn't enter it in and it only entered it in as a 2, well then that would be obviously throw off your answer and you're not going to get any points. And so it's really important and there's no way for us to be able to look at your calculator to see what you did. So please make sure that you double check when you put in data into your calculator into a list here and make sure that you typed on all the values correctly. Okay now so to be able to get the, um, so we want to get the mean, the standard deviation, the five number summary. In order to get that we're going to go to stats and we're going to go to calculate. And this is just one row of variables, so we're just going to do one variable statistics. And so from this, we can see here at the very top, our mean is 27.2. Our standard deviation is 6.63. And then our five number summary are these numbers down here. The 18, the 23, the 26.5, that's your Q2. If you're wondering, well, we have Q1 and Q3, but what's our Q2? Your Q2 is your median, which is 26.5, and your Q3 is 33, and our maximum value is 38. So again, there they are there. So your mean, 27.2, standard deviation, 6.63, then you can see your five number summary. And again, as you, the reason why we have that five number summary is it allows us to create what's called a box plot or a box and whisker plot. All right, let's look at number four. It says, if, data, if a data set has a mean approximately the same as the median, what is likely the shape of the distribution? Well, if, that means that it's going to be symmetrical. So if the mean and the median are approximately the same, it's going to be a symmetrical set of data. Speaking of symmetrical, it brings us to this idea of a normal, standard normal curve. And using the empirical rule. So this is obviously a situation where it's symmetrical. So remember the empirical rule, if we put that those numbers in, that means that this would be 68%. Then we have our 95% and 99.7%. Remember we can also break up these sections. So like this section here would represent 34% of the data. Remember it's symmetrical, so this would also represent 34%. This here would represent 13.5%. And the rest, so all of this would represent, so from here on, represents 2.5% of your data. Again, it's symmetrical, so that's going to be the same for this side. And this is also going to be 13.5%. So when you do that, when you when you understand that and when you label that graph, it's going to make answering these questions a lot easier. Now it says, suppose that his test score is normally distributed with a mean score of 78 and a standard deviation of 3. Let's go ahead and just use uh, this normal curve here and put in this information. So the mean score is 78. So there's your 78. And so we're going to have um, our standard deviation is 3, so we're just going to use that as a scale. 
So going to the right, 78 plus 3 would be 81, and then plus 3 would be 84, and then plus 3 would be 87. Going backwards, we'd subtract 3. So this would be 75, this would be 72, and this would be 69. So now we can answer this questions, or these questions. And so for part A, it says, what portion of the students score between 72 and 84? So scoring between 72 and 84 would be, whoops, I mean to erase that. There we go. So it's between 72 and 84 would be right here. So if you notice, that's the 95% of data. What portion scored 81% or lower? Now for that one, 81% or lower is right here, and it's everything to the left of that. Well, I know that from here down would be 50%. And remember, that purple section represents 34%. So we can just add together 50 and 34 and get 84%. All right, so for letter C, we're going to look at what percent of students had a score of 69 or less. And so if you look back up here at your normal curve, remember 99.7% of your data is between three standard deviations above, or, yeah, three standard deviations above and below your mean. And so we want to figure out what percent of students fell in this category down here. So that's outside of 99.7% of the data. So the easiest way to approach this would be if you took 100 minus 99.7, we get 0.3. Now that's 0.3%. Okay, so we don't have to change that to a percent. That's already as a percent. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that 0.3 and divide that in half. And the reason why we're going to divide that in half is because that 0.3 represents both of these sections. We just want one of them. So we would take 0.3 divided by 2, and that would give you 0.15%. So that's how you get part C. So to get part D, we're going to have to find the z-score. So to find the z-score, remember that we would take her score, which is an 89, minus the mean, which is a 78, and divide by the standard deviation, which is 3. And when you do that, you get 3.67. Oops, not a percent. 3.67 would be her z-score. And then lastly, to figure out what percent of students that scored an 89 or lower, that's where we're going to use that normal CDF on your calculator. So let me show you how to do that. So we would go to second distribution, select normal CDF. And again, you'd put your upper bound because we want to figure out that uh, what percent scored a 89 or lower, which we just found the z-score to be 3.67. So that's your upper bound. And so we'll leave our lower bound. Our mean then, if, since we're using the z-score, our mean would be 0 and our standard deviation would be 1. And when you do that on your calculator, again, you get 0.99987, which we can just round to 99.99%. And that would be your answer for that second part of letter D. So hopefully that answers all the questions you have from the review. Um, and if not, make sure you get those questions answered before we take the test.